In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a max realized profit and loss limit using Strategy Builder. This method will reset on every new day so you can backtest with it or run it on playback for multiple days. One thing to keep in mind with this example is that it is not a kill switch. It's not going to exit out of your position when you reach a limit. It is only going to prevent new trades after your limit has been reached. To get things started, we're going to open up Strategy Builder. If you don't know how to open it up, just go to your control panel, select new, and select Strategy Builder. From this page, you're going to select new strategy. Next, here you can type in whatever you want. So I'm just going to say max profit loss example. Select next. In this page, we have your calculate method. And this is just how often your calculations are made. When we have on bar close, it's just going to calculate once anytime a bar closes. For this example, I do recommend using either on price change or on each tick, just because we're going to have to constantly keep updating our values. The on price change is just going to be a little bit more efficient for what we're trying to do today. You can use on bar close, but it might just be delayed by one or two bars. So just keep that in mind. But I do recommend just sticking to on price change if you can. So we select that and select next. Now, before we get too deep into the code, let's first understand how Ninja calculates PNL and what we will have to do in order to achieve a daily PNL. When it comes to PNL, Ninja will only let you know the total amount for all of the days combined. We are not able to define a specific PNL for a specific day. So in order to get a specific daily PNL, we're going to have to perform a few calculations in order to get that daily PNL. So what exactly do we need? The first thing that we need is something that is going to store our most current up to date PNL. The second thing we need is something that will keep that same PNL value, but only from the start of a new day. In order to achieve our daily PNL, we're going to subtract the most current total PNL from this one stored value. Last thing that we need is just something that is going to store that new value that we created. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky when it comes to Strategy Builder. With Strategy Builder, we cannot subtract two private variables. You will have to unlock the code and manually type that out if you want to do any sort of calculations like that. However, if we create a custom series, then we are able to perform some of those calculations. A custom series is similar to a variable in the way that we can assign a value to it. The main difference is that a variable is like a separate container that stores your value for a later use. So when you need that value, you can just call on it and have access to it. A custom series, on the other hand, is a value that is stored within the bar itself. It's like saying, hey, remember that value we stored five bars ago? We need to look back at that bar and access that value. And this will all make a little more sense as we progress. When we're working with Strategy Builder, in order to make a calculation like this, we need a custom series. Let's just expand this and we're going to add a series. So I'm going to name this one our total PNL. This is going to be a double because we're working with decimals. Next, we need another series that's going to store the value at the beginning of the day. So I'm going to name this one new day PNL. And again, this will be a double. Now that we have that, let's move on to the next page. In this page, we have our inputs and our variables. The inputs are just variables that the user can define within the properties. This is where we're going to put in our user defined realized profit and realized loss limits. So I'm just going to type in profit limit. This is going to be a double. The default can be whatever your profit limit is. I'm going to say 400 for this example. You can keep the minimum at one. Then we're going to add a loss limit. Again, we're going to make this one a double. The default 
this time must be a negative number because we're defining a loss in this scenario. So for this example, I'm using negative 400 and just make sure when you're working with negative numbers, we have to delete the minimum. If you keep it at one, this is going to give you an error because negative 400 is less than our minimum. So delete that and you don't have to worry about it. Now for your variables, this is the container I was talking about in the previous slide where it's just going to store our final calculation for the PNL. So when we subtract both of our custom series, I need something that's going to store that value. I'm just going to call this one daily PNL tracker. And this will also be a double. The default, we can leave it at one. It's going to change as the strategy progresses. All right, once we have that, let's select next. And here we have our conditions and actions. And this is where we make everything else happen. For set number one, the first thing we have to do is assign the custom series of our total PNL to the Ninja Trader PNL. So let's go down to the actions section, select add, misc, and we're going to scroll down to set total PNL. Now we go to the total PNL section, set, go to strategy, and we're going to select the realized PNL. And with this one, I'm just sticking to currency. So once we have that, our total PNL, anytime there is a new candle, it's going to get assigned that same PNL value that is stored within NinjaTrader. So once we have this, I'm going to go ahead and create a second set and we'll come back to set number one in just a little bit. But first, I want to make sure we are resetting our daily PNL on the start of each new day. And once we do that, we can go back to set number one and see exactly how it works and how it keeps resetting. So for this one, I'm going to go to the conditions section, I'm going to select add. And I want to make sure this only gets triggered on the first bar of the session. So go to MISC, scroll down to first bar of session, make sure it is equals to MISC and true. And another thing I like to do, especially because we're working with on price change for this example, there could be scenarios where you enter on that same bar, but because we're still working on this bar, it's just going to keep resetting itself. So I only want it to reset once on that first bar. So again, I'm going to go to add, misc. I want to make sure we're only executing on the first tick of that bar. So again, we have to set this one to true. So this is just on the first tick of the very first bar. Now for our actions, we have to make sure our new daily PNL gets set to the total PNL only once. So go to add, misc, set new day PNL. And this one, you can also assign it to the realized PNL. All right, so now that we've assigned our new day PNL to the total PNL for that first bar of the session. We also must reset our variable that is storing our daily PNL. This is just going to get reset to zero every day. And for this next part, you don't need to add it. It's just if you want to see your PNL being displayed on the chart. I'm just going to go to add, go to drawing, scroll down to the fixed text section. And here you can select where you want your text displayed. I'm going to go with bottom right. The tag can be anything you want it to be. I usually just like to have one and I'm going to call it PNL just to keep it simple. This is not going to be displayed to the user. This is just the tag for your drawing object. What is actually displayed for the user is what's inside the text box. So go to set. When I'm displaying a PNL, I usually like to have all my options. So I'll say something like daily PNL, add another string. Then I'll set the total daily PNL for that day. So our daily PNL tracker variable. 
Then I'm also going to display our max loss and our max profit limits. So I usually like to split them up just with a dash. This could be literally anything you guys want. So I'm going to go to user input, our loss limit, add, and then I'm going to add again our profit limit. So something like this where it just displays our total PNL for the day, our loss and our profit limits. That way I know once it gets hit, I have a visual of why it stopped taking trades. So just hit OK and hit OK again. And another thing I like to do is I like to display when a new day starts. This could be helpful if you're backtesting and just want to see the moment it resets. Again, you don't have to put this in. This is just for a visual. So I'm just going to go to set background color and you can make this whatever you want. I'm just going to go with linen. All right, so now that we've reset everything on that first bar of the session, let's go back to set one because now we're going to have to update more values and make some calculations inside this set. So I'm going to go to add misc, scroll down to our set new day PNL. Now remember that a custom series is a value stored within a bar. So that value that we created on set number two, once a new bar forms, it's no longer going to store that value. So we must update it to the most current bar. So we must make sure that our new day PNL, that's the most current bar, bar so goes zero, it is equals to go to misc custom series. And we're going to set this again to the new day PNL, but of one bar ago. This is one bar from the most current. So hit OK. So all we're saying is our newest daily PNL is equal to the same value that was stored one bar ago. So anytime a new bar is created, that value is just going to keep updating with it. And that is the same value from set number two that we assigned at the beginning of the session. So this same PNL is going to remain constant for the remainder of the day. And now just to get our actual daily PNL, we must subtract the most current up-to-date PNL stored in NinjaTrader, subtract that from the PNL at the beginning of the day, and that is going to give us our new daily PNL. So go to add misc and we're going to set our daily PNL tracker. This is going to be set to our misc custom series. We're going to set total PNL. We're going to go down to the offset properties minus and set the zero. We're going to set this one again to a custom series of our new day PNL. So once we have that, hit okay, okay. And we have our daily PNL tracker is now equals to our total PNL minus our new day PNL. And that is how we get our daily PNL. So I hope that's making sense so far. All we're trying to do is subtract one value from another to get our actual working PNL for that day. And something else we have to do on this page. If you want your drawn PNL to keep getting updated on the chart is to make sure we can just copy the draw text fixed line and paste it directly into set one. And this is just going to keep updating the PNL shown on the chart. The last thing for set number one is we don't want this to execute on the first bar of the session like we do on set number two. We want these to be separated. So again, go to set one. I'm going to go to the conditions, add, go to misc, go to the first bar of the session, is equals to misc, and we're going to set this one to false. So anytime it is not the first bar of session, so any other bar, we're going to execute this code. In the case that it is the first bar of the session, we will then execute this code instead. Now for the next two sets, I'm going to add more conditions that are going to change the text in the case our profit or our loss are hit. So how we do that is in set number three, 
I'm going to add. I'm going to go down to our user variable, our daily PNL tracker. I'm going to say if this one is greater or equal to our user input and our profit limit. So when our profit limit is hit, I'm going to add another text. So fix text. I'm going to change the tag to the same tag that we had in the previous two sets. So we just had PNL in here. And this is going to make it so it updates the text instead of writing over it. And again, don't forget to change this to bottom right if that's where you want to keep it. Now the text is what's actually going to be displayed. So I'm just going to say PNL profit reached add. Just going to put in our PNL tracker, add backslash, add. And I'm going to set our user input and I just want the profit limit displayed this time. So hit OK. Now I'm just going to make a copy of this tab and I'm going to change everything for the loss. So again, our daily PL tracker is less or equals to our loss limit. I'm going to change the text around. So just change the text. Do not change the tag. Keep the tag the same. So I'm just going to change this to PNL loss reached and our profit limit will set to loss limit. And again, guys, you don't need to add these two extra sets. This is just if you want a visual. And for the final part, I'm going to create our orders and then we're going to see it on the chart and how it works. So let's create another tab. Now there's only a few things I recommend when you're building your own strategy and using this as an example. I do recommend ensuring your position is flat before you enter another trade. This will just give the strategy time to update and ensure you're not entering right away before your PNL can be updated. So I'm just going to go to strategy. My current market position is equals to strategy market position flat. And like most of my other strategy examples, I usually like to wait until at least one bar passes after your trade has closed. This will just help prevent your strategy from exiting and re-entering right away on the same bar. And you don't have to do this. I'm just showing you an example if you want to add it to your own strategy. So how I do that, I go to group, make sure you have the if any option selected inside the group editor, go to add, go to misc, bar since exit. And how the bar since exit works is your first trade is always going to be equals to negative one. So we always, always must make sure if we're using bar since exit as a condition that we give an option where your bar since exit can be equal to a numeric value of negative one. And this is just for the first trade of the strategy. It must be equals to negative one. And for any other trade after that, this one can be bar since exit is greater than a numeric value of one. Now this one is going to be for any trade after the first one, it must wait one bar after it's closed before it starts looking for a new trade. And for my actual entry condition, I'm just going to do a simple close it is greater than the high of the previous candle. That's Barca go one. That is going to be my long entry condition for this order. And guys, again, keep in mind, this is just an example. I'm not saying trade like this. I'm just showing this so we can see how the max profit and loss limits work. So. Now that we made that clear, to prevent new trades from taking place, once our limits are hit, we're going to set a user variable of daily PNL tracker. It's only going to allow trades if our PNL tracker is less than our profit limit or if our daily PNL tracker is greater than our loss limit. So only if our daily PNL is within these two limits, it's going to allow the trade. So for our entry, I'm just going to do order management, enter long position. Let's do quantity of 10 entry signal. I'm just going to name it entry. And I'm going to make a copy of this 
and change everything to the short side. So just my condition is the only thing I need to change. So once the close is less than the low of the previous bar, we are going to enter short. Again, 10 and entry. All right, we are almost done. We just have to set our profit and our stop orders. So go to add our stop loss. I'm going to set this to ticks and let's do 40 ticks and same with our profit target entry ticks and 40 ticks. Once we have that selected, hit compile and let's load this on the chart. All right, once that's compiled, let's right click on our chart, go to strategies, go to our max profit and loss example. Here you can see our profit and loss limits. You can change these around to whatever you want. I'm just going to keep them at 400. And we're going to go down to our control panel and select enable. So here you can see we took two entries and then it stopped trading for the day. We reset, that is this white line. We reset at six o'clock. Again, took two entries. They were both losers. Our stop got hit and it stopped taking trades. And again, on a new day. So let's run this on playback and see how it works. Here, I just fast forwarded to right at the end of the day. And I'm going to speed it up so we can see how it resets on its own. So we're just waiting for six o'clock. Order submitted. So six o'clock hits. We reset our PL. It's back down to zero. We see our loss limit and our profit limit. We just entered a new trade. Target filled. And you can see our target got hit. Our PL is now at 202. Let's actually open up the chart trader and I'm going to expand this a little bit so we can see just a little bit better how it works. So 202, that is the same PL displayed on your chart trader panel. Let's keep playing this. Order submitted. Order stop fill. Order submitted. So it's just updating with the same PL as it progresses. It now hit a negative 409 PL. Our PL loss has been reached. It displays the correct PL and it no longer takes any new trades because we hit that limit. So, guys, that's how the max profit and loss limit works. I hope you guys found this video useful. As always, take care. Enjoy.